Hello, YouTube land from the great state of Texas. Well, what stands before you is a dilapidated, dilapidated old house that, of course, you cannot enter. Um, at one point in time, I think it was a resting stop for travelers and um, it was a residence. But the current story is that this is on the National Register uh, historical marker. Um, but the land, the, the house is, but the land around it is owned by somebody else. And I'm hoping I got permission to go ahead and walk around today around this property and get the melee tech. So what you have here, the history is that this house used to sit a mile south next to a river. And like some rivers, they get dams. And then you get a lake. Well, that's what happened here. So back in, I think, 1912 or so, I think they decided to move this house. The story is that it took about six months to move one mile, kind of uphill. And the trees are... They'd have to cut some trees down to get this baby through, but um, they had to bring it up with oxen and wagons and um, to its present location. Uh, and I think that was around 1912. Um, so I know that it's on the historic aerials in 1953. I can't look back any further than that. The topographicals only go back to 1953. If I drive down the road, there is a really old stone chimney. And I'm assuming that's where the house was. But I don't think I can detect, it's really strange, but the chimney sits here and there's a fence right next to it. And I can probably detect on this side of it, but I can't detect on that side, I think, where the chimney was. Now, back over here, there's an old barn right there that used to sit I know in 1953, and I'm probably sure it's older than that, at least the 1953 photographs, it's there, and the land that's out there is a field right there, an orchard, well, it's not an orchard, but it's probably about two and a half, three acres. It's pretty flat right there. That, on the aerial photo, looked like it was, um, like garden. It was all patched off in squares and stuff. So they probably had that, like, they probably had sheep and pigs and chickens and different pens and things like that but today's focus is right around this property and there used to be another building old building over there somewhere and yeah it goes around the corner too quite a bit here let's go around the corner and look at this building anyways he told me that the person i asked permission said you just can't go in side so it's falling apart there's also, like I said, it's, it's owned by the Historical Society. And, um, but the property isn't. So it's a really big house. As you can see, it goes all the way around, wrap around two levels. But it's literally falling apart. And the sad part is, is that the people who own the property, the company who owns the property, um, you know, the only way that this would be renovated it is if they can let, let open this up to the public but it can't be open to the public so the historical society is just it's just gonna end up falling apart and that's how that's what i found out with the historical society and metal detecting is that they want to preserve history from you and i but they don't preserve history they let it fall apart they let it crumble they let it uh, get um, what's the word another phrase like um, such as the Oregon Trail the Oregon Trail is now becoming lost because you can't you can't go and you can't preserve the artifacts and relics from the trail they don't want you to so nobody goes there anymore and it just gets overgrown and it's lost so history is being lost but not preserved and that's what's happening kind of here in a way if the there was an agreement or something i mean the way that the work this would be could be renovated and reused it's a beautiful old house massive old house but shall i say let's get to detecting and 
see what we can find. I mean, if anything, I'm hoping that this house was here in 1912. I, I'm gonna guess that probably not gonna find too much, but I do see walkway out the front. I got walkway here. I got a walkway going over here to a big giant concrete pad. I got a concrete pad here. I didn't look back in the aerials too much, but I'm assuming that was probably a garage, another barn. And um, I just want to find where the potential um, laundry line used to be. So that's kind of one of the things with a house like this. Where was the laundry line? And what can I find underneath that laundry line? All right, let's get to check. All right, well, fortunately, the ground here is pretty soft, but the negative part about that is I can't really keep a good plug. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig my plug with my targets, and I'll explain to you a little bit. Um, these are just gonna go quick, so I wanna get some time here, but it's sun's going down, and I'm gonna be able to come back to this in the next couple of days, but anyways, I got like a mid 60s, 64, bouncing to 75 and my target trace on my screen was really going like this in a big bar so probably a big piece of iron but let's dig it I'll show you what it is well nail nail and the killer of them all a bent nail so three pieces of iron and I think that was all out of my hole. They came all came out at um, different depths. Now, was there something else right here? I think that was it. I mean, I did have a little... Oh, look at that. I said I had a tone in there. Look at that. A penny... just a Lincoln but you know that was hiding in with three three nails and um, I'm not sure exactly the the tone the depth that I was thinking I was digging was probably gonna be about five inches but stinking Lincoln around three pennies that's not bad I haven't dug in a while so my Ear training on the e manicure is, is I have to kind of start over a little bit, but um, away we go. Keep going. Lots of deer. Lots of deer here. For all I know, it's an oil dipstick or an old knob or something for who knows what. What I didn't notice is that there is a little decorative design to the top part of this. A little bit of a pattern in there. Can't really see it, but there is something on there. Well, I got my first wheat scent. I looked at that. Wheat scent. I'm not sure you're going to do the year. But what's nice about this wheat scent again is that it was in a hole with a bent nail. And that's pretty good. So this was coming in a decent, this was coming in a decent high tone, but not super high. I mean, it was coming in like in the 50s. So I thought, well, I might have a greeny, weedy. Um, but didn't end up being, and then when I got the nail out of there, this thing actually popped in a little bit higher in the numbers. So I'll take that. It looks like 40 something. 40, maybe 41. Or 40 something. 47, 41. And I'll take it. All right. I'm unfamiliar with the bugs in this area.
as big. What is that? It looked like a, um, it looked like a um, ah, cicada killer that they had over uh, back east. But um, yeah, I see him flying around over there. Boom, and he just landed again. But he had orange, this one had orange wings, but he had the body of a wasp. What is that? Texas, Southern Texas, what is that? Let's see what we got, see what we got. This is uh, one direction bouncing in the 70s. Other direction, getting the 80s, 90s. It's only giving me four bars. It sounds faint, small, because if it was four bars, I think that it would be, you know, um, maybe a little bit louder, but it's faint. So it might be a very small target. Let's see what it is. It sounds nice though. I like the sound. It's very clear. Not silver, but a button. It's a good old fashioned button. <sighs> Let's see, was that my good? Oh yeah. Nice little high tone on the button. All right, well, that's what I would expect to find around a house. Yeah, take it. So cute, it's a baby. So the baby is somewhere hiding. Interesting, it was just running around all the others. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six, and the baby somewhere. It's interesting. I don't know where the baby's hiding. I think that baby's hiding right over here. What you doing? Like I said, they're everywhere. They're so used to us. People. I know, no, I ain't got no food for you. No food for you. All right, day two. Gonna do a little bit around the barn. Uh, still got a little section of the house to do. Didn't really find much, just the one we penny. My, my opinion is that this has been detected before. And, uh, but we're gonna see what we can find out here by the barn. I know that that used to be that little area in that section over there, which is all high grass right now. It looks like on the satellite view used to be all like pens and stuff. So I got uh, a lot of ants right here. And I know the ants are so much different here on the east than they are back home. These suckers probably bite and sting. But I'm going to reach in there and grab something round. It was giving me a 77-ish. Doesn't look silver. But looks to be a dime. And it's just a rosy. So down about three inches. So 1960s, I think there. Well, that's my first dig today. So yesterday, um, uh, I had a couple hours in the evening. Today, I had some th th storms today earlier and I'm out now and we'll see what we can find. Well, the problem with this area, right there, 
two old uh, horseshoe pits. And I just don't know how old things are. I mean, the tree, obviously, right? How old is that tree right there? But I'm not really finding anything. I mean, these are probably so cool with the old Spanish moss when it's, I guess when it's green. I don't know, these kind of look dead, but anyways, uh, I got a coin. It's about five inches down. I'm kind of going toward the front of the house. But so far, not much of nothing, just a bunch of pull tabs and just a memorial, not even a weedy here. So pretty disappointing. Definitely think this has been picked over pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna keep going.